In this section, we're going to take what we learned in the last section about the bell curve and z-scores and probabilities under our normal distribution. We're going to extend it. We're going to find examples where our mean is something other than zero and our standard deviation is something other than one. So instead of having what those were, which, is called, which are called standard normal distributions, in this section, we're going to look at just normal distributions. So here's our first example. The following is a graph of a normal distribution with a mean now of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Find the area of the shaded region. So you'll notice we still have our bell curve. Our mean is still in the middle at the peak and the standard deviation still tells us, helps us find z-scores and probabilities, but we don't have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one anymore. So we're gonna go back to the formula for z-scores that we used in a couple of sections ago, that z is equal to the x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So if we use x is 120, the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15, we have 120 minus 100 over 15 gives us a z-score of 1.33. Once we calculate our z-score, now we can use our standard normal distribution table to figure out the probability. So let's see, the z was 1.33, so that would be a positive z-score, so that's on the right side. We have 1.3 for the first two spot decimal places and then 0 0.03 for the second. So it looks like we have a probability of 0.9082. So apparently the area to the left of x equals 120 is 0 0.9082. Let's do some more examples. Let's say we have the following graph. Let's keep our mean still 100 and the standard deviation still 15 and let's find the area to the left of x equals 80. So we'll do the same thing. Now this time since 80 is less than the mean we would expect a negative z-score. <clears throat> and sure enough, when we use our formula, 80 minus 100 is negative 20, divided by 15, our standard deviation, gives us a z-score of negative 1.33. Now that we found our z-score, we can go back to our standard normal distribution table and find the corresponding area. The following is a graph of a normal distribution table, again with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Let's find the area shaded here, the area to the right of 75. So we'll use our same formula, 75 minus 100 over 15, and we have a z-score here of negative 1.67. Let's go all the way through this one. When we go to our table, negative 1.67 is on the left. So negative 1.6 and there's 0 0.07. So it looks like we have an area of 0 0.0475. Now remember, just like it shows on the top, this area always gives the area to the left. In this example, we wanted the area to the right. So we just found the area to the left, this area right here <clears throat> is 0 0.0475. That means that the area to the right is 1 minus 0 0.0475, or 0.9525. Okay, let's find an area between x equals 120 and x equals 90. Well, that would be finding the area to the left of x equals 120 and subtracting off the extra area, so there's the, x, <clears throat> the area to the left of x equals 120, and subtracting off the extra area that's to the left of x equals 90. So let's do that. The area to the left of x equals 120, to find that, we need to find the z-score. So we'll find the z-score for x equals 120. So 120 minus the mean of 100 is 20, over the standard deviation of 15 gives us a z-score of 1.33. Doing the same thing for x equals 90, we get a z-score of negative 0.67.
So we need to subtract the areas to the left of 120 and to the left of 90. And if we look at our table here, we're going to have a, the z-score of 1.33 gives an area of 0 0.9082. And a z-score of negative 0.67 gives an area of 0.2514. And when we subtract those, the area in between is 0.6568. Okay, let's go the other direction. So let's say that we know the area, we know the probability, and we need to find the corresponding x value. So what, is, what value has a 0 0.6 probability to the left if the mean of the distribution is 100 and the standard deviation is 15? So in this problem, the first thing we need to do <clears throat> is find the z-score associated with 0.6 to the left. And when we do that using our chart, we see that the z-score associated with 0 0.6 to the left is a z-score of 0 0.25. And then we can use a variation of the z-score formula we've been using where we solve for the x value instead of the z value. And we can plug in z equals 0 0.25, sigma is 15, and mu, or the mean, is 100. And the x value we get is 103.75, which makes sense. Remember, 0.6 probability, 60%, is a little bit bigger than half. And if the mean is 100, that'd be right in the middle, then we would expect something just a little bit bigger than 100 for this corresponding x value. And we got 103.75.